We're standing outside the Ministry of Justice Tribunal Service today as some of the 200 non-state core participants in the undercover policing public inquiry. We represent a range of individuals and organisations working together, including the campaign opposing police surveillance, police spies out of lives, the undercover research group, the monitoring group and the blacklist support group. We work to ensure that the voices of the spy cops victims are heard loud and clear and that this scandal is never allowed to happen again. Just a few moments ago, the chair of the inquiry, Judge Sir John Mitting, released an important and detailed interim report on what has been learned so far after eight years of hearings and evidence. He concludes that the Metropolitan Police's political spy cops unit should have been disbanded 50 years ago, that its activity was a waste of time and that its intrusiveness and tactics employed would have caused public outrage if ever revealed. We welcome such findings. It's been a long and hard journey for many of us, campaigning to expose the truth, which is finally beginning to get the recognition it deserves. This is mostly thanks to the determination of campaigners, victims, lawyers and some investigative journalists. We have worked so long and hard for years to expose all this, often up against police denials, obfuscation and obstruction. The shocking reality has at last been acknowledged. The results of the inquiry so far are devastating for the police, the security services and government. Since 1968, the spy cops infiltrated or reported on over a thousand social and environmental groups, trade unions, left-wing organisations, black family justice campaigns and many others. Today's report covered just the first part of the inquiry's work from the formation of the spy cop squad in 1968 to 1982. The chair has now set out the inquiry's view on what has been learned so far about the secret and unlawful operations, the shocking tactics employed right from the very start, and how this scandal was backed and how this scandal was backed and covered up for decades at the highest level of the Met and successive governments. Many of the tactics employed were absolutely sickening. Such tactics included invading people's homes and lives, the abuse of women as sexual targets, some officers even fathering children before disappearing, stealing deceased children's identities, spying on family justice campaigns, compiling information on children and teenagers, sending tens of thousands of reports to the secret security services, that's MI5, aiding the blacklisting of trade unionists, taking positions of influence and power within organisations targeted, and brazen interference with the justice system, which led to unfair trials and unsafe convictions. The report is timely, as it comes at a time when the Met has been found by other inquiries and official reports to be institutionally racist, sexist and corrupt, and remains under special measures since July 2022. The Metropolitan Police themselves were finally forced in February to admit that the spy cops operations were, quote, unjustifiable by modern standards. However, it's worth noting that these unjustifiable secret operations and their unacceptable tactics continued for decades despite so-called modern standards introduced by Parliament in 2000, the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act. So the judge's report does not assign blame at this stage but finds that there were four crucial issues which should have alerted the Metropolitan Police and Home Office to serious problems. They were 
long-term intrusive and sometimes sexual relationships by undercover officers, the legality of entering private homes without a warrant or just cause, the theft of deceased children's identities by officers, undercover police taking on positions of responsibility in the groups they were targeting and using that to report on personal details of people engaged in legitimate activities allowed in a democratic society. The inquiry chair also found that, in his views, only three groups out of many hundreds were ever a legitimate target for undercover policing of any kind, and none of the, the groups are, which are involved with the inquiry. The chair stated that these issues should have been addressed at the highest level within the Metropolitan Police Service and within the Home Office. And don't forget, there were regular reports going from the SDS to the Home Office on their activities annually. He concluded, the question is whether or not the end justifies the means. This is Judge Mitting speaking. I have come to the firm conclusion that, for a unit of a police force, it did not. And that, had the use of these means been publicly known at the time, the SDS would have been brought to a rapid end. In the light of the current spotlight on the failings of the Metropolitan Police, among the most shocking evidence released by the inquiry are reports showing that the Met explicitly targeted police accountability groups, included fam including family justice campaigns like the Lawrence, the Stephen Lawrence family, um, justice campaigns for murdered loved ones, including those killed by police or racists. Our voices. This is us speaking now as non-state core, core participants. The unethical attitude and behaviour of the undercover police towards campaigners and the language they used in their secret daily spy reports, which you can all see on the undercover police inquiry re website, that the way they refer to women's bodies, the way they refer to, uh, to black activists and Jewish activists that they spied on in the most racist and misogynistic way, they showed utter contempt for democratic rights and for people trying to make the world a better place. This is political policing. We now hear the thoughts of some of those who were spied on, starting with Jessica from the Police Spies Out of Lives campaign. Thanks to years of support and efforts by campaigners, the authorities are now on a back foot. We are proud to have helped shift the official narrative from neither confirm nor deny what took place through just a few bad apples to some unlawful operations and now an entire police force and policing culture that is rotten to the core and sanctioned by the state. And this is a statement from Lindsay, one of the core participants uh, who was deceived into a sexual relationship. No doubt many undercovers and managers will be relieved they did not receive stronger criticism but the evidence of their own reporting speaks for itself. We see racist, sexist and offensive language regularly being signed off. Their reports show the contempt with which they held campaigners. They had no guardrails, whether reporting on children or making salacious comments on people's sexual activities. All of this was filed away by Special Branch and the MI5. Um. If you could just say your names as well, uh, or if you, you, you want to yeah. call the, um, your name? Uh, Jessica, Jessica from Police Spies Out of Lives. Okay, and, and your name? My name is Dave Smith. I'm a core participant. I was spied on by the undercover police because I'm a trade unionist. We were involved in campaigns against deaths on building sites and for unpaid wages. Undercover police officers were in our meetings, were on our picket lines, were sometimes chaired our meetings, and that information wasn't just sent to Special Branch. They shared uh, this information 
with uh, notorious blacklisting organisations, the Economic League and the Consulting Association. The police have admitted that they supplied intelligence gathered by the undercover police with major employers, construction employers, that meant that thousands of construction workers were unemployed for years on end. This is a national scandal. This report that's come out today should be the final now in the coffin of the Metropolitan Police. Have you ever had an apology? We've never had an apology for what they've done, um, but more, more and more reports, more and more public inquiries are finding the Met Police institutionally sexist, institutionally racist, institutionally corrupt, institutionally homophobic. And what this has done now is shown that anyone involved in genuine civic society, trade unions, environmental campaigns, political parties that are perfectly legal have been seen as a legitimate target in a war against their own citizens. This is an outrage, and the Met Police should be wound up for what has for what has come out of this. Um, because we're involved in blacklisting, um, we're also. Uh, a bit appalled that despite all the evidence and despite all the documents uh, that blacklisting has been taken place uh, and that the police have provided this information to big business, that there is not... I, when, when the 200-word report came out, I did a word search of it, and there's not a single word in the entire thing on blacklisting or vetting uh, of staff. And that is scary. And it should... Like that, you know, this is only the beginning of the inquiry. It's the end of Tron one, there are seven tranches. This needs to be really gone into uh, because not just about the intrusion, it's about what they did to it. The real, they accuse us of subverting democracy. The real people who are subverting democracy in this country are the undercover political police units and they need to go and they need to go now. They call themselves the Special Demonstration Squad, SDS. This is the state's dirty secret and we don't want it anymore. Do you hear? Should we hear from Lindsay? I'm Lindsay German. Um, I'm involved in, I'm a core participant both in this tranche and in future tranches, and I think it will show that I've been spied on since the late 1970s, and I'm sure we'll find that's still going on. I'd like to very much endorse what the other participants here have said, that this is a vindication for what we've done. It's a shame on democracy in this country. We hear, we hear about free speech all the time, but actually it's a shame on democracy that these people have been spying on us. I haven't suffered in the same way that some people have. I haven't had an illicit relationship. I haven't had back blacklisting, which has lost me my job. But I feel this has been an intrusion into my political activity. It's been an intrusion into my democratic right to express myself in the way that I want to, to organise in the way that I want to. And I think we have to find out much, much more. I know the, um, the SWP, which I was a member of then, there were loads and loads of police spies in that organisation. The two that I knew best we're not even able to hear their real names. We're not even able to know who these people are, even though one of them has, uh, has died. This is something which has been a cover-up, which is absolutely shameful and has damaged the lives of many, many people. It has to stop. You seem to indicate that you think this is still going on inappropriately. What, what evidence do you have of that? I think it's absolutely clear that when you look, we know that the future tranches are going to show much more recent spying on people, and I'd be very, very surprised if it wasn't still going on. We know the special branch, we know there's the secret services, so let's wait and see. But is, but it, I'm is it ever justified? Is it ever justified to, to look at terrorism attacks, for example? But, but the, if you look is it justified in those... If you look at what Mitting said, he said there were very few examples, yeah. none of yes. which, the people represented yeah. here, none of which fall into that category. We were people who were activists, political campaigners, people who did all these things for year after year, there was no justification for doing it. I was a friend of Blair Peach who was killed by the police in Southall, a demonstration in 1979. They spied on the memorial march the following year and they had lists of, what, nearly 200 people who participated in that demonstration, many of them friends and family of a man who'd been killed by the police. What is the justification for that? Do you have... Uh, uh, do you want to get to the bottom of who, who at the highest level knew about the detail of what's going on, because that hasn't come out yet in this report. Absolutely. It's very, very important that we do. This was under...
successive governments this, this went on. But also, I'd like to know why did this continue? There was no justification in the first place, but there certainly was not the justification for it to continue for decades as it has done. It should be disbanded, and I very much agree with the point that the Metropolitan Police has shown itself to be absolutely unfit for purpose in every respect and should be disbanded as well. Sorry. Yeah, my name's uh, Steve Headley. I'm the former Assistant General Secretary of the RMT Union. And uh, I was spied on. I'd actually wanted to spy cops, claim he was homeless, and came and stayed at my house. I half tempted they build the Metropolitan Police for his uh, board and lodgings. But I had one of them uh, who actually came to Derry uh, with me during the peace process. They came to Derry, stayed in my family's house. And um, obviously, uh, we're trade unionists. I was blacklisted for over a year when they gave uh, my details to the employer's organisation. And the employer's organisation made sure I didn't get any work for over a year. And uh, this is absolutely appalling. You know, you can throw about red herrings about terrorism. No terrorists here. There's no terrorists here. We're all campaigners in a democracy, which we're supposed to be able to do in a democracy. And it actually it shows up what this state is all about. And the state are increasing its powers. The policing bill coming in uh, is going to increase their powers to do things like that. And people better watch out because we're sliding into authoritarianism. We're going to the Can I just make a personal statement then? I think then we'll, we'll wind it up, yeah? So, um, uh, do you want to say something? Do you want to say something? But only that, so Lady yeah. Agostino, uh, solicitor for um, coordinator of the non-state lawyers group. I just want to confirm that one of the reasons for, for, for your viewers that Jessica is wearing a face covering is not because she wants to conceal her identity from the wider world. It's because she has an anonymity, as do a number of other women, to protect their identities at the hands of having had relationships with undercover officers. Um, Jessica, you will hear from in tranche two, in, uh, which due to take place in spring 2024. Now, this is a watershed moment for all non-state core participants who've campaigned long and hard to get to this stage. It's taken eight years to get to, to an interim report published today. It couldn't be more significant, but what is even more significant is next step. What happens from now? Tranche two, as I said, we'll hear from the likes of Andy Coles, Bob Lambert, who went on to father a child. There are a number of significant officers and deployments going forward, and so we all need to look to the future. What happens next? Why do you believe this is a watershed moment? It's taken eight years to get a published report from the inquiry that looks at not only the deployments, the managerial role, but also it goes up to modules 2B and C, looked at governance and um, the interaction with the SDS managers and the Home Office. And the documents so far, as you, if you scrutinise the report, show this goes to the upper echelons of government. That's why it's a watershed moment.